Hi guys, I'm Paul from Love Logs and today I'm smoking beef ribs on the Weber kettle. Let's go. So this is the start of a series of popular barbecue cooks where I'm hoping to show you that sometimes you don't need all the answers to make great barbecue food. So I'm going to show you my kit list and first up is the Weber Master Touch. Now there's no doubt in that this is an amazing piece of kit. The Master Touch air control is second to none and for a starter barbecue it can do almost anything. But you can do this cook on any barbecue that's got a lid and vents to control airflow. So charcoal, today I'm using British oak charcoal. I know it's sustainable, I know the process of manufacturing it, I know there's no chemicals, no binders, no nothing else. This is high quality, it lights easily, it's a pleasure to cook on. So smoking chunks, today I'm using cherry. This is wild cherry from a local woodland. Common question, do I need to take the bark off my chunks? No you don't. So fire lighting, boxer matches, you can use a lighter and a natural fire lighter. No chemical blocks, no gels, this is just wood wool and a little bit of wax. I've got a small Weber chimney starter. This gets me up to temperature quicker, but you don't have to use this. You can just light the charcoal in the barbecue. Water tray. Allows me to add boiling water to the barbecue. Helps to stabilize the temperature, but the steam also helps with smoke adhesion to the meat. Aluminium foil for wrapping when we hit a certain temperature, which will lock moisture in. Common question, do I need to use butcher's paper? The answer is no. You can use butcher's paper, you can use grease proof. I like aluminium foil because I can buy it plastic free and it recycles well. Temperature probes, I've got two. This is a cheap one off Amazon, cost me about 20 quid. That's gonna give me the temperature of the grill and also the temperature of the food without opening the lid. Then I'm gonna to switch to my instant read as we get closer to the end of the cook. I'm gonna check for final temperature, but also probe for doneness. And finally, a large set of barbecue tongs. So now I'm gonna show you how I set up my charcoal. So as you saw, I've just dumped a load of charcoal in and I'm gonna get that into a crescent moon shape around the barbecue. So I'm not too fussed about lump size. It's the air control through the barbecue that's gonna control the speed of the burn and that's gonna control the charcoal usage as we go through the cook. I'm gonna start a small fire here and I'm gonna add smoking chunks around the charcoal and as the fire propagates around the barbecue, the new chunks light and add smoke to the cook. So when's my charcoal ready to cook on? With good, clean, quality lump wood, it's ready to cook on as soon as it's lit. And in fact, you don't wanna overburn it in the chimney starter, because then you're just losing energy. So as you can see, the large yellow flame has gone. That means the natural fire lighter is finished burning. We've just got a charcoal fire and we're good to go. My fire's lit and I'm going in with my water tray. And back on with my grate before we shut the lid. You can see in terms of my fire setup, I've got my fire running on this side and I've put the lid back on, put the vent over there. That's gonna encourage the smoke to come up, flow over the food and out the vent. So, so these have been dry brined in the fridge overnight, but I wanted to show you what I got off two different orders of beef ribs from Good Butchers how I trimmed them and what was left over. So the first time I ordered beef ribs, this is what I got and I was a bit surprised. S individual ribs that came like this. I was expecting one of these. Now the truth is these are both equally good. Once they're trimmed down, these give you absolutely loads of surface area to get a rub on. Getting a rub on equals more flavor. So these are just as good. The Jacob's Ladder gives you that cut through, so you're gonna see the smoke ring, gonna be amazing. But it also gives you quite a lot of other bits that you know, aren't really beef ribs. So, whatever turns up, whatever you order, whatever you can find online, you're cooking beef ribs, it's the same cut through the center of a short rib. Now in terms of trimming, as I said, these are gonna show up like this. And what you can see is you've got a layer of meat, often a layer of fat, another layer of meat, and then another layer of fat. You're gonna get so many different answers to this question. What should I trim and what should I leave? So this is personal preference. I find when I cook beef ribs, because I cook hot and fast, this top bit gets dry quicker, whereas this bit stays moister, so I like to separate them. I'll break this down, I'll use the beef in stew, and I'll use the fat to render it down. And I just cook the lower fleshy part 
It's gonna puff up beautifully when you cook it. It's gonna be amazing. With the Jacob's Ladder, this is how it arrived. Taking the fat cap off, you can see. I've lost quite a lot off the end here. It's bits here, little bit here. Basically, I could just tell that it looked like it was gonna dry out. So that's what I'm looking for, is any part of the, the beef gonna cook at a different rate to the rest of it. I also lost this second layer of meat. There was a thick layer of fat in between here. I'm cooking hot and fast today. So again, I'm gonna stew that down. That'll go in there. And we're just gonna cook this and a couple of these individual beef ribs today to show you how they both react. So binders and rubs is something else that people totally overcomplicate. Basically for a binder, you can use whatever you want. I'm using some chipotle mayo. Now rubs, there's nothing stopping you from buying rubs using something super complicated, but you don't need to. In here, I've got a tiny bit of salt, not too much, because I've already got salt in the dry brine. Lots of pepper, lots of garlic, blitzed up, gives us a beautiful rub for beef. So let's get that on. Golden rule, one hand for holding your product, one hand in the rub. So these are all rubbed and I'm no pro, but that's the point today is I want to show you what results you can get without focusing too much on this. Another common question, do I need temperature probes or can I just use this on the top here? The bottom line is no, you don't need to use temperature probes. They're a nice to have, they're reasonably inexpensive. This measures temperature in a different way to your probe. This is measuring temperature at the top of the dome, so it's always going to be hotter than your grill temperature, which is where your food is. So you can use this temperature, you just need to adjust the way you cook. Temperature wise, you've heard me refer to cooking hot and fast, and that means I'm aiming to cook in a range of about 150 degrees C. Reality is if I drop down to 130, pop up to 170, that's no problem. I'm currently sitting at 164. I'm gonna bring that down a little bit just with control of the vents before I get the meat on. So when's my barbecue ready to add food? Well, you can see here I'm not getting any thick, dirty smoke, and that's what you wanna avoid. Just when the wood is catching, you don't wanna put your food on, you wanna wait until you get this clear, very light, almost wispy blue smoke, then you're ready to go. So my top vent is fully open, my bottom vent is almost fully closed, and the barbecue's running at 150 degrees, bang on. So let's get these ribs on. So my fire's ticking away down here. I don't want any of these to cook with the heat from the charcoal directly. That's why I've placed them away from the fire. I'm gonna pull the lid down and they're gonna cook like it's a home oven. So my beef's on, my lid's down, I've got clean smoke. And now all I've gotta do is monitor the temperature of the cook using this. So I'm cooking hot and fast, and that means I'm aiming for about 150 degrees C grill temperature, but the reality is if that spikes at 160 or runs at 140, that's no problem. That's just gonna affect the length of my cook. So I need to keep an eye on the grill temperature and adjust accordingly. In a barbecue like this, the chances are you are going to need more charcoal for this cook. So if you see the grill temperature start to drop consistently, that's when you're going to need to come up, take the lid up and add more charcoal. So we're well underway. It's a great opportunity for me to go and clean up and go and get something done with this beef that I didn't get on the barbecue. I'll see you in a couple of hours. So I'm a couple of hours in and the eagle-eyed amongst you would have spotted that I didn't put a probe in the meat. And I just tend to do that to save the battery of the unit. So I'm going to get a probe into the meat now and we'll have a quick look and see where we're up to. So a very quick look at these because I don't want the lid up too long, but you can see the one at the front nearest to here is cooking faster than the ones at the back. So I'm going to give these a little spin around. So I've had a move around with these and to be expected really, this smaller one is cooking much quicker. That's nearly ready to wrap. These two and this one aren't as far along and that's somewhere in the middle. So I'm gonna come back in about 10 minutes, check them all and wrap the ones that need it. So when to wrap is another really common question and there are three answers. You can wrap at a temperature, you can wrap when the meat is stalled or you can wrap when your bark is set. I like to wrap beef ribs at 85 degrees C internal temperature. So I've pulled the small one off and it's a good chance for me to show you how I wrap. So first I create a nice little boat for my liquid. I like to use a mixture of Jack Daniels and barbecue sauce. You can use beef stock, you can use anything. Small amount of that in there. And we're just looking for an airtight seal. Which I haven't got, so I'm gonna wrap again. And this one has cooked so quickly, it's not gonna be long until it's done. 
So the Meteor Rib is now reading at 85 degrees C internal temperature, so I'm going to lift the lid and probe them all with the instant read. So the two at the back are reading at about 85. Remember these two are at the front early, so they had a little bit more direct heat. These two are reading at about 78 to 80, so I'm gonna leave them unwrapped for a little bit longer and wrap these two. So they're wrapped and I'm gonna get my temperature probe back into one of the ribs. So I don't have enough probes for everything, so I've been tracking the temperature of the wrapped beef to try and figure out when to come back and wrap the rest of it. Let's have a look. So we're at 85 and about 88, and as you can see with these last ones that have cooked slower, the bark development is better. So that is one thing you sacrifice when you cook hot and fast at 150 instead of low and slow at 1, 110. You don't get as good a bark. You can see with these, the ones that have cooked slower, the bark has developed much better. So we've now got four separately wrapped pieces of beef. This is the Jacob's Ladder. This is two of the individual ribs, one individual rib, and that tiny little rib, which is probably gonna be the first to cook. So that first one's probing at 95, 96. So that's gonna come off, get wrapped in a towel to rest. So the next one along is at 95 degrees and we're now gonna use the instant read to probe for tenderness rather than temperature. So that's exactly what we want. The probe's going in and out like butter with no resistance. So I'm gonna pull that one off and get it wrapped. So I've got the two probes and the two pieces of meat. Now I just want these done now, so I'm gonna open up the vents and finish them off at about 180, 190, maybe even 200. So these are both probing beautifully now, so we'll pull them off, get them wrapped and get inside. So we've got our beef ribs here. These have been rested in the microwave in the towels. I haven't got a fancy cool box, but the microwave does the same job. And these have been rested for about two hours after roughly speaking a five hour cook. So first up we've got the small one, which I'm almost expecting to be overcooked. Okay, so that actually looks pretty good. This is the individual rib that was cooked for a little bit longer. These are the two individual ribs that were second to come off the barbecue. And then finally is the Jacob's Ladder. So I've got to say on first appearance, I'm really happy with all of these. I don't know if you can see in the light, but these two are on for longer, the Jacob's Ladder and that rib, and the bark has developed better. Bark on the ones that cook quicker, you can see it's not perfectly set. You lose that by cooking fast. Bark on this one, beautiful. On the Jacob's Ladder, beautiful. So that slower cook has given you a better set bark. Let's go into them. So first up, as I say, I think this one might be overcooked, but this is the individual rib, straight off the bone. First one to cook and first one to come off the barbecue. Moist, tender, yeah, not bad. Maybe slightly over, we'll compare it to the others. So these two came off at the same time. A little bit harder off the bone. Straight out. Yeah, nice, moist. Bit of fat through the middle still, so if you cook slower, that one's nice. 
on this one, if you cook slower, you break down more of this fat, meat becomes more tender, but that's still gonna be amazing. And then these two had the longest time on the barbecue. They were further from the barbecue, which is why they cook slower, and this is why the barks develop better. So I do expect these two will be the best two. Mm. Okay, so I've missed a bit of membrane there. You wanna take the membrane off the back of these ribs and that's what helps the ribs slide out. You can't eat that. Tough, horrible. But the rib itself, moist, juicy, amazing bark, pretty good smoke ring for hot and fast. So yeah, happy with that one too. And then finally the Jacob's Ladder. And really this is the one that everyone goes after because what you do, you cut all these up like this, depending how big your ladder is, and then everyone gets a serving like that. Good smoke ring, nice and juicy, amazing bark. Really, really cool way to serve beef. Look at that. So five hour hot and fast beef ribs, single ribs and a Jacob's ladder. Some very simple tools, very simple fuels, all coming out absolutely amazingly. Thank you so much for watching. No, I'm not saying that the details or the answer to these questions don't matter. All I'm saying is as a beginner, don't sweat the details too much. Get out there and give it a go and I promise you, you'll be making epic barbecue in no time. What are you waiting for?